Sweet Greek here at the Paran Market and we're going to be cooking a beautiful Christmas feast today but it's not going to be just any feast, this is a traditional Greek feast. This is what I'll be cooking for my family and friends on Christmas Day this year to celebrate. So what goes into a traditional Greek shoulder of lamb? The most important ingredients, most important elements are pepper, salt, oregano, lots of garlic, lemon, onion and rosemary if you like. I actually do love rosemary in our shoulder of lamb so I use it. If you don't want to use it you can just use oregano. But these are the, and olive oil of course, these are the fundamental ingredients that you need to have in a shoulder of lamb roasted the traditional Greek way. Now one more important thing for you to remember when cooking with oregano, when using oregano I should say, make sure you're using the traditional Greek oregano. At the shop we have um, a Cretan one that we use all the time, but the difference between using an authentic Greek oregano to a non-authentic one, like one, whilst there's nothing wrong with Australian oregano, it just doesn't have the same pungent, amazing aroma that takes your lamb to another level. I wish I could have um, smell a vision or smell a film or something because the aroma is amazing. We do have it at the Sweet Creek shop if you'd like some. Using a small knife, a small paring knife, just one with a nice sharp point, what we're going to do to begin with is make some really nice holes in our meat. So this is going to take a bit of, just make, cut them very easy, nothing Nothing complicated about this, just some nice big holes because we want the lamb to be infused with that lovely garlic and rosemary and oregano. So lots of little holes. So now that we've added quite a few holes in this lamb, the next thing I'm going to do is add, just take some of my pepper, mixing it all together, mixing some oregano. The reason I like to mix it separately in a bowl is because we're going to use our hands. I don't necessarily want to be using my dirty hands because I'm not using a glove and it's because I want to feel it. I like to feel what I'm doing. So I haven't got a glove, but I don't want to be dipping my hand back and forth into clean herbs and spices. So I'm, I like to do this and then I know this is specifically for the lamb. A little bit of salt, then that gets mixed. So to begin with, we're going to just rub our meat generously. So we have our garlic, now this happens to be beautiful Australian garlic. So this is where you see um, we, we're mixing, we're creating a Greek feast, we're using traditional Greek oregano, we're using traditional Greek olive oil. But we have to have Australian garlic because it really is one of the best garlics in the world, obviously. Now I'm going to just chop off the bottom here. Don't waste these little bits that are there, you're going to use them afterwards. So, But it just is easier to peel this apart if you chop it. <laughs> there we go. Just separate it all. You're going to need quite a bit of garlic. We're going to be generous with our garlic. With your knife, crush it a little bit like that. Peel it. If you get a little bit of skin on your garlic, it doesn't matter. It goes into the salt and pepper. And we continue doing this till we've pretty much done a whole bulb or enough to cover these all holes. And we've been quite generous with the holes. So we now have our garlic, I've peeled it all and you can see the beauty, this is amazing Australian garlic. And I'm just going to rub all that salt and pepper and oregano into it. So we're going to continue to slot our garlic into our little holes and that makes sure that our lamb is going to have that lovely garlic pepper, salt, oregano infused into the meat inside. Um, and now I also then want to, I have this beautiful rosemary, which is now also in abundance, available in abundance at the moment. So I'm just going to cut this rosemary. You don't need to use a lot of rosemary. It's just that tiny little bit. And if you don't want to use it, you don't have to use it at all. But I actually like to break these little sprigs from here like that, just little ones like that. And where I've inserted the garlic, it just goes in there like that. Moving on to our baking tray. I've just got a simple stainless steel baking tray. 
doesn't matter. Use whatever tray you have and whatever tray you like to use. But one little trick that I like is to add baking paper on the bottom because it just helps with washing up afterwards. So you get a lot of caramelisation and, and gooiness and what have you and it just makes washing a little bit easier. So on the bottom here, first layer is baking paper. I'm now going to show you how I take this lamb to another level and how what else I include. On the bottom, I'm aiming to lift the lamb up up from just sitting on the bottom because I want it to cook all the way around evenly. So we're doing that by adding some onion slices, nice thick onion slices. And I'm just going to cut thin slices, thick slices rather. You can leave the skin on, if it comes off, take it off, really doesn't matter. This is not about perfection. This is about creating a layer that's going to have a flavour that further infuses your meat, but it's also going to be a bed for us to put, lay our meat on. Now we've got our beautiful rosemary as we talked about that earlier and I actually like to take it as it is in whole bunches like this and break it a little bit and add it here in the baking tray. And once again, this is optional. If um, you know, if you, if you don't like rosemary, by all means, don't use it. We have our beautiful bed here that we've created to sit our lamb on, and this is where it's going to sit for the remaining three to five hours, depending. Um, but remember earlier on, we had actually some garlic that we had left over garlic cloves so that were um, in the salt, pepper and oregano. We're not going to waste that. So what we're going to do uh, is season, because every stage, every layer needs to get seasoned. Because if you feel like eating that, it's all edible. This is all beautiful. Even though it's providing us with seasoning, it's also edible. So you might want to eat some of these beautiful caramelised onions afterwards with your lamb. So that's now seasoned. And then we're going to take our lamb and sit it on top of this new bed that we have created for it and put it to sleep for the next three to five hours. We love to use lemons in our cooking and you cannot have a beautiful shoulder of lamb without lemons. And so we're going to use lemons. Now this is what I do and I want you to see this. I don't like to wake the, waste the zest. So I'll use my microplane and zest it. So all the zesting is now complete. I've zested my two lemons and I've just popped them here on the top here, um, but that's not enough. And I don't want you to cut just plain lemon slices. We are gonna add lemon slices, but I'll show you what you're going to do. You're gonna cut them top and bottom. One thing that's quite bitter in cooking is this white pith and you do not want that in your cooking. So we're gonna now cut it down like that. And now these lemon slices will go on top of your meat. And the last thing, last, but not least is the amazing extra virgin Greek olive oil that's going to be smothered and lusciously poured over this lamb. We do need a little bit of moisture, although a lot of moisture will come out of our meat, but let's just add a cup of water as well to create that steam effect. Just on the bottom of our tray there. And now this is our next trick. This is really important because what I want to do is tuck this lamb into it like a little blanket. So it's going to go to sleep for the next three to five hours, but tucking it in with baking paper. And we need two sheets of baking paper. But I'm going to show you what I do. I saturate it with water. So I do this. Keep squishing and squashing it under the tap till it's really nice and soft from the water. And don't squeeze that excess water out. And finally, we're going to seal this tray with foil, seal it well, and then it'll go into the oven and do its thing for the next three hours. Of course, now we're ready to prepare our lemon potatoes. We're very well known for these potatoes at the Sweet Greek Shop here at the Paran Market. But no feast, no traditional Greek feast is complete, no table is complete without a tray of these luscious, lemony, crispy potatoes. Now, I'm gonna show you how to do this. It's very simple. Peel your potatoes. I haven't pre-boiled them, they're just raw potatoes. Peeled, cut into wedges like this. I actually like these. We call them gondolas, wedges, it doesn't matter. I just think they look really nice on the tray. Generous amount of salt, about a teaspoon, if you want measurements, roughly a teaspoon of salt over your potatoes. Again, our ma famous traditional Greek oregano goes over the top as well. Some cracked black pepper or white pepper, it doesn't matter. 
another little ingredient that I'm going to use that um, is a little trick of mine and it does change your potatoes. It adds a lovely golden hue to them and also a little bit of flavour. But it's using sweet paprika, not smoked, sweet. So I'll just sprinkle a little bit over them. A little bit over them. And then using my hands, I'm just going to rub all of this together. You can't have Greek potatoes without Greek olive oil. So here it goes, a generous glug of this olive oil. Be generous, it needs the olive oil. I think for these potatoes, I might use two lemons. Finally, we're going to add a cup of water to the baking tray, and then they're ready to go into the oven. And what is a Greek feast without a traditional Greek salad? So I'm going to show you how to make one. We start off with the most amazing tomatoes that you can source out. I like to use these heirloom tomatoes. You can tell how beautifully shaped they are. The color's different and I just want to compare. That's a normal tomato here. That's one that I'm going to use. The colors are different, the shape is different. Try to source this one out. We start off with the best tomatoes because that's what's going to take your salad to the next level. When your tomatoes are big, you can cut them like this. They don't always have to be in wedges. You can just cut like this, rough shapes. I actually have, I love doing that to be honest because I find that um, they take, the tomatoes are different when you cut them ad hoc, I guess. And when you cut your tomatoes, don't use the knife the way I do. It's just a habit. Once again, just like you select your tomatoes, select your cucumbers. I prefer to use these smaller Lebanese ones. I find they've got less seeds in them because the seeds release water. Peel them and slice them. Onion is the next part, important part of a Greek salad. Now, I have a preference to use these beautiful white onions. They're sweet, they're delicate, and they just add another level of flavour to your salad, but you can use red onions if you like, just don't use brown ones. Our final step in this beautiful traditional Greek salad is for us to season this. So we're going to add a little bit of salt again, not too much to begin with, just a nice pinch of salt. Of course, oregano, because what is Greek without oregano? generous glug of olive oil because this is what allows you to dip your bread into it at the end when all those juices are released. Tiny splash of red wine vinegar. Salad is now complete. We have these amazing ingredients, tomatoes, olives, onion, cucumbers, all the elements that make a traditional Greek salad. But the final thing to do is find a beautiful bowl, find your most special bowl, your Christmas bowl, whatever it is, but make it special and decant your salad into this bowl. I found this one here, it's one of my favourites. I like the colour of it too because it enhances the reds, the greens, the whites. So I'm going to carefully decant my salad into this. There's one more stage to complete this beautiful salad, luscious, delicious. It's feta cheese. Greek feta cheese is what you have to use here. Not any other cheese, but Greek feta cheese. There's a couple of ways that you can present it. You can either break it like that and put it on the top here like that, or you can have one piece on top like that and crumb the rest, which I like to do. Finally, I'm going to just add that tiny bit of extra virgin olive oil on top just to give it that shine and additional flavour. Well, the exciting moment has arrived. Our shoulder of lamb is out of the oven, lemon potatoes are ready, salad has been prepared and we're ready to set our table for our amazing traditional Greek feast. Now look at this amazing shoulder, oops, oops, it's very hot. Um, I'm going to show you how I plate this. Do you see how this bone actually literally fell off the meat because that is how well it's, look, I can actually pull it off but I won't because I want it to sit here. I'm looking at shredding this meat rather than being perfect and carving it. But I'm just going to take this rosemary sprigs off. And the final thing that I'm going to do is add our beautiful lemon potatoes. Let's add a little bit more of rosemary on top here. 
and I think that's about it, really. I think that there is your amazing, traditional Greek feast. There is no greater feast, trust me. Lamb, potatoes, salad. Make this for your Christmas this year.